Malcolm, the rightful heir to the Scottish throne, has fled the country lest he be murdered by the usurper Macbeth. Macduff has come to England to encourage Malcolm to lead a charge against the tyrant. Let us seek out some desolate shade and there weep our sad bosoms empty. Let us rather hold fast the mortal sword and like good men bestride our downfall and birthdom. Each new morn, new widows howl, new orphans cry, new sorrows strike heaven on the face, that it resounds as if it felt with Scotland and yelled out like syllable of dollar. What I believe are wail, what no believe, and what I can redress, as I shall find the time to, friend, I will. What you have spoke, it may be so, perchance. This tyrant, whose sole name blisters our tongue, was once thought honest. You have loved him well. He hath not touched you yet. I am young, but something you may deserve of him through me, and wisdom to offer up a weak, poor, innocent lamb to appease an angry god. I am not treacherous. But Macbeth is. A good and virtuous nature may recoil in an imperial charge, but I shall crave your pardon. That which you are, my thoughts cannot transpose. Angels are bright still, though the brightest fell. Though all things foul would wear the brows of grace, yet grace must still look so. I have lost my hopes. Chance even there where I did find my doubts. Why in that rawness left you wife and child? Those precious motives, those strong knots of love, without leave taking, I pray you, let not my jealousies be your dishonours, but mine own safeties. You may be rightly just, whatever I shall think. Bleed, bleed, poor country, great tyranny, lay thou thy basis sure, for goodness dare not check thee. Wear thou thy wrongs, the title is a feared. Fare thee well, Lord. I would not be the villain that thou thinkst for the whole space that's in the tyrant's grasp and the rich east to boot. Be not offended. I speak not as in absolute fear of you. I think our country sinks beneath the yoke. It weeps, it bleeds, and each new day a gash is added to her wounds. I think withal there would be hands uplifted in my right. And here, from gracious England, have I offer of goodly thousands. But for all this, when I shall tread upon the tyrant's head, or wear it on my sword, Yet my poor country shall have more vices than it had before, more suffer, and more sundry ways than him that shall succeed. Who should he be? It is myself, I mean, in whom I know all the particulars of vice so grafted, that when they shall be opened, black Macbeth will seem as pure as snow, and the poor state esteem him as a lamb, being compared with my confineless heart. Not in the legions of horrid hell can come a devil more damned in evils to top Macbeth. I grant him bloody, luxurious, avaricious, false, deceitful, sudden, malicious, smacking of every sin that has a name. But there's no bottom, none. In my voluptuousness, your wives, your daughters, your matrons and your maids could not fill up the cistern of my lust. And my desire, all continent impediments would all bear that did oppose my will. Better Macbeth than such a one to reign. Boundless intemperance in nature is a tyranny. It hath been the untimely emptying of the happy throne and fall of many kings. Yet fear not yet to take upon you what is yours. You may convey your pleasures in a spacious plenty and yet seem cold the time you may so hoodwink. We have willing dames enough. There cannot be that vulture in you to devour so many as will to greatness dedicate themselves, finding it so inclined. With this there grows in my most ill-composed affection such a staunchless avarice that were I king, I should cut off the nobles for their lands, desire his jewels in this other's house, and my more having would be as a source to make me hunger more, that I would forge quarrels unjust against the good and loyal, destroying them for wealth. This avarice sticks deeper, grows with more pernicious root than summer seeming lust. It hath been the sword of our slain kings. Yet do not fear. Scotland hath foisons to fill up your will of your mere own. All these are portable with other graces weighed. But I have none. The king becoming graces as justice, verity, temperance, stableness, desire, bounty, perseverance, loneliness, devotion, patience, courage, fortitude. I have no relish of them, but abound in the division of each several crime, acting it many ways. 
Nay, had I power, I should pour the sweet milk of concord into hell. Uproar the universal peace. Confound all unity on earth. Oh, Scotland. Scotland! If such a one be fit to govern, speak. I am as I have spoken. Fit to govern? <coughs> Nay, not to live. Oh, nation miserable. With an untitled tyrant bloody scepter, when shalt thou see thy wholesome days again? Since that the truest issue of thy throne, by his own interdiction, stands accused and does blaspheme his breed. Thy royal father was a most sainted king. The queen that bore the oftener upon her knees than on her feet died every day she lived. Fare thee well. These evils thou repeatst upon thyself have banished me from Scotland. Oh, my breast. My hope ends here. Macduff! <laughs> this noble passion, child of integrity, hath from my soul wiped the black scruples, reconciled my thoughts to thy good truth and honour. The devilish Macbeth, by many of these trains, hath sought to win me into his power, and modest wisdom plucks me from over-credulous haste. But God above, deal between thee and me. For even now, I put myself to thy direction and unspeak mine own detraction. Here abjure the taints and blames I laid upon myself for strangers to my nature. I am yet unknown to woman, never was forsworn, scarcely have coveted what was mine own. At no time broke my faith, would not betray the devil to his fellow, and delight no less in truth than life. My first false speaking was this upon myself. What I am truly is thine and my poor country's to command. Whither indeed, before thy here approach, I'll seaward with ten thousand warlike men already at a point we're setting forth. Now we're together, and our chance of goodness be like our warranted quarrel. Why are you silent? For such welcome and unwelcome things at once, it is hard to reconcile. 